Hello students, we will be continuing with the chapter irrigation and we will begin with the sprinkler irrigation. The sprinkler irrigation. So what is this sprinkler irrigation? So sprinkler irrigation is a method of applying, okay, is a method of applying irrigation water which is similar to the natural rainfall. So basically it is the method of applying irrigation water water which is which is similar okay which is similar to that of natural rainfall which is Similar to natural rainfall. Okay, so when we talk about the sprinkler irrigation, water is distributed through a system of pipes. So basically, in case of sprinkler irrigation, water is distributed through what? Through a system of pipes, usually by pumping the water. Next, it is then after the water is pumped out, okay, and it is distributed with the help of the pipes, it is sprayed into the air. The water is sprayed into the air through sprinklers so that it breaks up into small water droplets which falls, which falls to the ground. One more time, when we talk about sprinkler irrigation, method of applying irrigation water, which is similar to the natural rainfall. So what are they doing here? They are using a system of pipes. What happens? The water is pumped out, okay? And with the help of pipes, later on they are sprayed into the air. And when it is sprayed into the air, it looks like it is raining, like small droplets of water starts to fall. Thus, known, thus being known as the sprinkler irrigation. This sprinklers can also be it can also be mounted can also be mounted mainly on a moving platforms moving platforms that are connected to the water source since they are connected to the water source and they have a moving platforms these sprinklers can also be used in that manner basically when we talk about the sprinkler irrigation it is done in areas okay mostly done in areas having Scarcity of water. So this is one of the major method that is your sprinkler irrigation. Now let us talk about the advantages. Advantages of sprinkler irrigation. So the first advantage would be, first advantage would be, there is no loss of water by evaporation or seepage in case of sprinkler irrigation. So, there is no loss of water by evaporation, by evaporation or seepage. Number two advantage would be it is suitable for all types of soil and land. So secondly, suitable for all types of soil and land. Okay, any kind of soil or land that we have, sprinkler irrigation is suitable for all of those. Third, when we talk about the advantage, it increases yield and checks soil erosion. It increases yield and as we said, what does it do? It checks soil erosion. One more time, when we talk about the advantages, there is no loss of water by seepage or evaporation. Number two, suitable for all types of soil and land. Third, it increases yield and checks soil erosion. Next, let us talk about the this advantages. So, number one, disadvantage in case of sprinkler irrigation is 
that the earth we say this advantage of the problem we could say is that it has higher initial cost. Higher initial cost. What happens is that to set up sprinkler irrigation, it costs a lot in case of these kind of sprinkler irrigation, thus leading to higher initial cost, which may not be suitable to all people or all farmers. Only it would be suitable to the richer section basically. So number two, when we talk about the second disadvantage, it is helpful, okay, or it is mostly helpful for small land area and for crops which require less water. As the water is being thrown in the, in the case like the rainfall, okay, like the droplets of water tends to fall, the sprinkler irrigation. So here in case of this, it is helpful for only small land areas and for crops which require less water. So we could say it is helpful for small land, small land area and as I said it requires or we could say it is mostly the crops that mostly grow here tend to require only less amount of water. Thirdly, when we talk about the third disadvantage of sprinkler irrigation, it is that this method, okay, this method cannot be used in all types of crops such as jute and paddy, or we could say such as those crops that require more amount of water. So this method cannot be used in all types of crops. Cannot be used for all types of crops. So one more time when we talk about the disadvantages in case of sprinkler irrigation, higher initial cost setting up tends to take a larger amount. Secondly, it is helpful for small land area, not for bigger areas. Okay, And also crops, only those crops can grow here which require less amount of water. Thus we can see here again that this irrigation cannot be used for all types of crops, basically for those kind of crops which require more amount of water. Now let us move on to the next type of irrigation that is your drip irrigation. So when we talk about the drip irrigation, okay, in drip irrigation water is applied, water is applied near the plant roots, okay? Near the plant roots, suppose the roots grow here, near the plant roots itself, water is applied in case of drip irrigation. With the help of, or we could say through drippers, or we could also say on or below the soil surface at a low rate. Water is not poured heavily, water is dripped in a certain amount so that the roots do not decay or the plants do not decay. The soil moisture that is there okay, is kept at an optimum level with frequent irrigation. With frequent water supply, what happens is the soil moisture is maintained. In case of drip irrigation, nor too much of water nor very less amount of water is applied. The water is applied in an optimum manner so that the soil moisture remains intact and does not hamper the growth of the plants. When we talk about drip irrigation next, let us talk about its advantages. So, when we talk about the advantages of drip irrigation, the first advantage would be water application efficiency is high in case of drip irrigation. So, we could see water application efficiency is high in case of drip irrigation. That means water is not wasted in case of drip irrigation. Number two advantage would be fertilizers, okay, fertilizers and nutrient loss. Since these are lost easily when too much of water is applied on the soil. So here in case of drip irrigation, fertilizers and nutrient loss is minimum. Okay? Why is it minimum? As what happens is, as water is a 
supplies near the plant root the water is can be absorbed easily and since as we said earlier also not excess amount of water is utilized because of what because of which what happens is that fertilizers and nutrient loss is minimum is minimum or very less we could see. Thirdly, when we talk about the third advantage, it is water distribution is uniform. Okay, as I said earlier also, not too much of water. So water distribution is water distribution. Water distribution is minimum. Sorry, water distribution is sorry, water distribution is uniform. Water distribution is uniform in case of the third advantage. Not just uniform, it is also controlled. Okay, controlled and evaporation is reduced. Reduced, thus conserving water. So we could also say since evaporation is reduced. Evaporation is reduced. Thus, what does it do? Thus, it helps in conserving water. Thus, conserving water. So, one more time, when we talk about the advantages of drip irrigation, firstly, water application efficiency is very, very high. So, the, that means the water is applied in the perfect manner. Secondly, fertilizers and nutrient loss is also very less. Thirdly, water distribution is uniform and it is also controlled. Not too much of water in case of this. This drip irrigation. Fourthly, evaporation is reduced through which what happens? Water conservation can also take place. Now moving on, let us talk about the disadvantages. So, number one disadvantage in case of drip irrigation is that drip irrigation method is expensive. So, firstly itself, it is expensive. Number two in case of drip irrigation is that the disadvantage is that it requires special, it requires special technical knowledge for successful operation of this method. So here again it requires it requires special technical it requires special technical knowledge. Why does it require special technical knowledge? Basically because they should exactly know what amount of water is to be put on the roots. So what happens is that for that itself they need to have proper technical knowledge about controlling the flow of water so that this method becomes successful. Thirdly, it is not suitable for every crop. It is not suitable for every crop. Okay, one more time when we talk about the disadvantages, it is expensive, it requires technical knowledge and thirdly it is not suitable for all types of crop. Now when we talk about this drip irrigation, okay, among all the irrigation methods, drip irrigation is the most efficient and what happens is it can be practiced in a large variety of crops especially in case of vegetables and flour. So one more time when we talk about drip irrigation it is one of the most popular or more efficient method that can be utilized in case of vegetables, flowers and so on. And for this drip irrigation you can refer to figure number 5.13 whereas in case of sprinkler irrigation you can refer to figure 5.12. Now let us talk about the next irrigation that is the center pivot irrigation. So when we talk about the center pivot irrigation it consists of a series of pipes. Okay, So in case of this they have 
series of pipes. Okay, these series of pipes are with a wheel. Series of pipe with a wheel, with water being supplied through the so water is being supplied through one end with the help of a hose. Downward facing sprinklers are placed at equal length. So downward facing sprinklers. Downward facing sprinklers are used at equal length. We could say at equal distance along the pipe. So on a pipe, they have what do they have here? They have wheels. Okay, so downward facing sprinklers are placed at equal length along the pipes so that the water is distributed equally. This is most commonly used method in areas which are oddly shaped or we could say oddly shaped fields. Okay, so these are mostly used in oddly shaped fields such as in the mountainous region. So, mountainous, mountain region or these are mostly used in the mountainous regions. Now, one of the basic advantage of using the center pivot irrigation is that this system helps to conserve water and increase the ability to produce even in dry areas. So, basically they are used because they help conserve Help conserve water and also helps produce crops in dry areas as well. For this, that is your center pivot irrigation, you can refer to figure 5.14. Now let's just talk about another irrigation that is your another method of irrigation that is sub-irrigation or steel irrigation. Sub irrigation or sleep irrigation. Now, when we talk about the sub irrigation and the sleep irrigation, this type of irrigation is mostly it is mostly used in fields which have high water tables. So these are mostly used in areas having high water table. Next when we talk about the soft irrigation or the sleep irrigation, what happens is that through this method, okay, through this method, the water table is raised artificially. The water table is already high with the help of pressure. What happens is the water table is raised even more with the help or we can say artificially. Okay. Why are they doing this? Basically to allow the plants to be watered directly into the roots. Since the water is raised artificially, what happens is that the water is directly, okay, directly put into the roots. Or we could also say it is raised basically so that, or we could say the soil or the plant's roots to be watered directly. This method is also efficient efficient basically in saving water okay efficient in saving water efficient in saving water as it does not what happens is as it does not get wasted through evaporation because water comes in direct contact with the roots but it is also one negative impact is that it is also very time consuming Time consuming and also labor intensive. Though it helps to conserve water, okay, efficient in saving water, but it is very time consuming and it is also a labor intensive method. And for this sub irrigation or sleep irrigation, you can refer to figure 5.1. So today we learned about the sprinkler irrigation, drip irrigation, central pivot irrigation and lastly sub irrigation or sleep irrigation.